Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. I've recorded and mixed quite a few projects over the past several years, and if you're anything like me, you'll often go back to older projects to see how you've progressed. Hopefully you've progressed. Today I'd like to show you how to revisit an old project and to prepare it for remixing. I'll find that in some cases I used plugins in an old project that I don't have anymore, or I may just want to reset a project and start from scratch to see how my skills have changed over the years. Let's take a look. I'll start by opening the old project, and we can already see a project load warning showing that many of the plugins that I used on this project previously I simply don't have anymore. I do have a tendency to trim plugins that I don't use that often. The project still loads, however it will not sound like it used to. All of the plugins that are listed in red are ones that I don't have anymore. The ones that are in orange are simply bypassed. This particular project is one that I recorded a few years ago. A friend and I did a cover of Possum Kingdom by the Toadies. While we do have a proper mechanical license for the performance and release of this track, I'm not sure that I can play it on YouTube at this time. Click the link above if you'd like to hear it as I mixed it a few years ago. Now one of the first things that I would like to do, because I do want to preserve this original mix, is to save a new copy of this project. I'll click on File, and Save Project As. I'd like to save it in the same directory as the original project, because that's where all of the original audio exists. I'll just change the name under the File Name dialog. And I'll call it Reset 2021. Now in this case I do not want to create a subdirectory or check mark any of the other options because we're going to use audio that's already there and we're already in a subfolder for the project. Click Save. And now as we can see in the dialog up top, this actually is running the new version of the project. However, all of the plugins, envelopes, and mix settings are still present. In order to do a proper reset of this project, you will need SWS extension. If you don't have that installed, click the link above to learn how. There's a few different ways that you can handle plugins. Typically, if I'm doing a full remix, I like to just remove all of the plugins. You can always refer back to the original project if you'd like to see what plugins were on there initially. If you'd like to keep them in this project but offline all of the plugins, you can go to View and Project Media Effects Bay. This will show us all the plugins that are in the project currently, and we can see their status as either active or bypassed or unavailable. I can click the first plugin and then shift click the last plugin to select them all, then right click and choose to either bypass or offline those plugins. But as I said, my preferred method is to simply strip all of the plugins and start from scratch. I'll close the project bay, then go to Actions and Show Action List. Again, you will need SWS extension for these actions that we'll be calling. Filter for Clear Effects. And the action we're looking for is SWS slash S&M clear effects chain for selected tracks. Before running that, we'll need to select all of the tracks. So I'll click my first track and then press Control or Command A to select all, and then run this action. Once again, be sure that you have saved a new copy of the project so you don't overwrite your previous one. I'll run that. And if I close my actions list and take a look at the project, I can see that all of the effects have been removed, with the exception of the ones on the master because I forgot to select that track. You can highlight the master and run that action again, or since I've only got three, I'll just hold Alt and left click on these to remove them. Now that I've got my effects removed, I'll need to restore the volume and pan of each of these tracks. With all of my tracks still selected, I'll go to the actions list again, and in the filter, type Reset Volume. The action we'll be looking for is Zanakios SWS Reset Volume and Pan of Selected Tracks. I can double click that action to run it, or click it and choose Run or Run and Close. I'll double click it this time. Now we can see that the pan for each track has been reset to center, and the volumes have been placed at Unity. And finally, we'll need to take a look at the sins on each of our tracks. I've got several sins on this that I'd like to remove. Once again, with all tracks selected, I'll go to Actions, Show Action List, and filter for Remove Send. The action we'll be looking for is SWS slash SNM Remove Sins from Selected Tracks. I'll double click to run that. And now all of my sins have been removed. I've got a few tracks in this project that were used for sins. For example, the parallel drum compression, and I've got a few reverb tracks which now are missing the reverb plugins. But since there are no longer any sins in the project, it's safe to leave those tracks in place as I'll likely be rebuilding them anyway. Revisiting old projects can be a great way to step up your mixing and see how much you've learned over the years. If you'd like to try your hand at remixing our version of Possum Kingdom, check the link in the description. I'll leave a project there for you to download. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. I like coffee.
join us on Discord and engage with other Active Reaper users.